Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brian and welcome to Brian Reads. Alright guys, so as I promised in my previous video, when I talk about 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea that I've been making a part 2 and a part 3. So this video is the part 2 of this book discussion. If you haven't seen the first video, please pause this video right now and see the first video by clicking this link on top of your screen right here. In the first video, I talk about how the story started, who Jules Verne was, and how our three main characters ended up in the infamous submarine, The Nautilus. So I highly recommend you to check it out before getting into this one. So in today's video, I'll be talking more about the science behind The Nautilus. You may have questions such as, how does it work? How does it stay underwater that long? Or what lights it up? Yeah, in this video, we'll be talking all about the science behind The Nautilus on how does the Nautilus work. We will be talking about underwater pressure, we will be talking about electricity, we will be talking about torques, yes, and we will be talking about all scientific aspects that Jules Verne has noted about the Nautilus inside this book. One thing that you might have known or I have mentioned before about this book is that what I really love, like one of the things that I really love about this book is how Fern gets into details in his writings. So one part of the book that I really enjoy reading would be in chapter 11 and chapter 12, which is exactly what we will be discussing today. But I'm just going to give you a brief overview about it. So in these two chapters, Fern talks about the science and physics behind the knowledge. So he used scientific terms, he used calculation, he used numbers, which I think is really impressive. Now, the interesting thing is that we will be taking all these calculations and all these theories and testing it whether does it make sense or is it truly applicable in real life if that doesn't excite you i don't know what will i don't know but before we get into the video if you haven't already done so please subscribe to my channel give this video a like and if you enjoy this video please share it to your friends and family so they can enjoy it too and without further ado let's just get into the book all right so in this book the science and physics behind the Nautilus is detailed in two chapters, which is in chapter 11 and chapter 12, which is titled All by Electricity and Some Figures, respectively. A quick and interesting fact. All the details and description of a submarine that Fern does inside this book was actually ahead of its time. But throughout time, the technology for submarines was actually realized. As the submarine nowadays have similarities and close resemblance to Fern's descriptions of the Nautilus during the time when he wrote this book. I believe that because of Fern's prediction coming true, the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was actually classified as a science fiction, while his other book, Journey to the Center of the Earth, with um, non proven theories. So it was not classified as science fiction, but as an adventure genre. I actually got this little nugget from another video that talks about this book. So if you want to check it out, I'll also put the link down below. So the first science topic that I want to discuss in this video is how did the Nautilus produce its own electricity? So again, in the first video, I ended with um, telling you guys that the captain and the professor was in the drawing room while the captain shows the tools that he uses to navigate the Nautilus. And moving on from that, Captain Nemo actually told Professor Aronnax that the main source of power for the Nautilus is electricity. So he explained that the electricity he got from the seawater surrounding the Nautilus, in which seawater has sodium in it and he extracts it, which then gives heat, light, motion and life to the Nautilus. Alright, so actually in the book, Josephine talks about in detail the compositions of seawater, but I'm not going to get into it. If you want to take a look, I'll put it right here. And let's just continue with the video. So electricity is the main source of power for the Nautilus, but however, it does not help the Nautilus to create oxygen while it is underwater. Because the submarine is able to surface whenever needed to fill up the air tank and then go back down. However, electricity is also useful to the Nautilus because it powers um, pumps inside the Nautilus to enable it to stay underwater longer. It also helps to tell the time since 
the captain does not regard day and night under the sea because you know you living under the sea you can't just like you have no sunlight well i guess you have sunlight but you know you you can't live like you do on land you know you you get the idea and last but not least the use of electricity is to also indicate the speed of the nautilus from then on the professor follows the captain to the center of the boat in which there lies a smaller boat within the nautilus so there's a well with an iron ladder on the center of the boat fastened with an iron hook which leads towards the top the iron ladder leads to the small boat in which the captain explains that the boat serves the purpose for hunting, fishing, and simply for pleasure. The captain further explained that to use the boat, the Nautilus doesn't have to resurface again because the Nautilus and the small boat is connected with a watertight connector with double opening from both the side of the Nautilus and the small boat. After using the boat, the boat gets back on board as the Nautilus comes to it, as both of them are connected by an electric thread enabling the passenger of the small boat to telegraph to the large submarine indicating that it wants to come back which i think is pretty genius you know like um these things are what makes the book really interesting because firm really gets into the details and he really plans out like everything just to ensure that um it actually works in a science fiction point of view but you know um we're gonna test it later whether it really does work or not in real life so after wandering around the center of the boat the captain and professor then visits the kitchen the professor lists that in the kitchen electricity does all the cooking there's a heated distilling apparatus which evaporates and creates drinking water because you know you're in the ocean you you can't drink salt water Close to the kitchen was the engine room of the Nautilus, in which the professor describes that it is separated into two. The first part of the engine room was for producing electricity, and the second part are the machineries that connected the electricity producing machine with the screw. And in the engine room, the captain said something interesting, and I'm gonna quote it directly from him. He said, you see, I use Bunsen's country fences, not room corps. Those would not have been powerful enough. Enough. Bunsen's are fewer in number but strong and large, which experience proves to be the best. The electricity produced passes forward, where it works by electromagnets of great size, on a system of levers and cogwheels that transmit the movement to the axle of the screw. This one, the diameter of which is 19 feet, and the thread 23 feet performs about 120 revolutions in a second. And further explaining, the captain also mentioned that the Nautilus has a speed of 50 miles an hour from this contrivances. Yes, I believe you've heard both of those names, Bunsen and Rumkorf. Bunsen, or as known as Robert Bunsen, was a German chemist, and Rumkorf, also known as Heinrich Daniel Rumkorf, was a German investor, inventor. So both of them was referenced by the captain in his previous quote that I said. So this particular quote by the captain was scientifically detailed that I was interested and decided to do some further research on it to like, you know, search up the names and search up the terms. And yeah, I actually found something really interesting. So I came across an interesting article and the website's name is fernianera.com which I guess um, he got from Fern and he added ERA. And I think this website talks about everything Jules Fern. And the title of that particular blog post was All by Electricity, which if you haven't noticed, that was the title of the 12th chapter in this book. So yeah, I will leave the link down below if you guys want to check it out after you watch this video.